What's up y'all for this week's video I'm going to be talking about drum breaks and how you can like get the most bang for your buck out of using them and um, just tips of what you can do and how, to, how you can add drums to them and still have them sound cohesive so like adding new drums without them losing the drum break flavor so with that being said this is probably one of the more cursed works works in progress that I have so um, it's kind of penis music-y but forgive it um, I do love it very much though so with that being said I'll go ahead and play the clip so you know what you're getting into. So I want to start out by just getting some stuff out of the way for this project because I'm sure people are going to be like, oh, do one on the sound design, do one on this, do one on that. So the sound design, I already did one on. It's the um, the Future Rhythm Granulizer video from last week or two weeks ago, whatever. That's That's all these sounds right here. I just rented them out of that, so... And this one is a respace that I made in a separate project. Oh no, this is like a little loopy thing that I did for the, um, I didn't make this particular loop, but if you watch the glitch core on easy mode video or something like that, the glitch core one with the, uh, preset gl glitch core template or some shit, I'll put the, I'll put a link in the comments. I made this using that trick, this little penis music-y sounding thing. Right. Um, this respace one, I've done tutorials on respaces, so just go watch one of those. Right, and that just repeats, um, and I'll talk about basically how this section works so that you don't have to be like, the cool part, he didn't go over. This is how this works right here. It's pretty simple. Basically, I just picked a couple sounds out. And just hock it in between them. So it took, took different, um, like big sample dumps, right? So this is not like me going through a sample library and picking them out. I've rendered like a huge batch of the melodic rhythm hits. I have a bunch of respaces here. That's with the EQ. Right, and then I just went in and like slid the piece that I wanted, right? So I'd move stuff around and get whichever piece sounded right there. Um, the next thing, the penis music -y part, it's just one big loop that I took pieces out of, right? So I had this as my starting point. Just went in here and sliced out like, right, every uh, section or whatever. Um, I did a little processing on that, so I'll show that really quickly. Not that. Right, so I have two layers. One's a pitched up layer, the brighter one. Typically when I'm doing projects, if I pitch a layer up, I'll just go in the colors here and like make one brighter, right? That's how I made the two. Well, I mean, that's how I colored them. Uh, that's how I do that though. So I can remember like which one's the pitched up, which one's the not lighter color typically is. So then the pitched up one, I'm just sending into like. Um, so then I just hawk it between these and like do little switch ups. That's a future rhythm. Uh, this is one of the future rhythm. It's the it's the, one of the bass loops from the Daria Core pack. Super slowed down. Also sounds kind of cursed. Um, what else do I have in here? Nothing crazy. Just know that every eight bars something switches. So. Like once this part starts. As you can see, this lane gets more stuff. So it goes from like every other hit to like a little fillers worth of stuff in here. All 
right pretty pretty basic i'm kind of going way more in depth with this than i thought i was gonna uh but then the last part here i think there's not even too much altered in this section it's just like the most busy section of it because i took this is where the drums go to like half time so i have more space to do funky stuff with <laughs> super boppy all right now uh the next thing is something i no one cares about this i'm going to talk about it but no one i promise you cares about this and that is how did i get this vocal this beautiful drake vocal that sounds originally like this how did i take this beautiful gorgeous vocal right this one right here how did i take that beautiful vocal and make it sound so god awful so I can get the pain. Yeah, it just made it the worst that it could possibly be. Um, so the way that I did that, first of all, go in here, I used some pitching stuff, so I pitched it way up. Dance with me. No, I could dance like Michael Jack. So I pitched it an octave up after setting it in the correct pitch for the project. Then I used the st the stretch pro. Dance with me. Which Dance with me. takes the chip monkeyness out of it and makes it a little more like formanty. Dance with me. No. It just tries to preserve the formants there. So then I sent it through some effects and uh, Dance with me. the first one that I have is Dance with me. No. just a high boost to get some of the sibilance back into it, which is the dance with me, that type of stuff. Dance with me. No. Send it through a vocoder, fruity vocoder, which one of the cool things about fruity vocoder, or I guess it's not cool. Where's my vector scope at? I don't see it. Well, basically fruity vocoder makes things Dance with me. No that are stereo it makes a mono dance with me no which really worked well for this vocal i think dance with me no i could dance like michael jack super heavy compression then a bit speak with dance with me no that gives it a little like chorusiness but not really stereo it's just like adding dance with me no another chipmunk voice on top of the vocal that i just removed the chipmunk voice from uh i don't know maybe it's not as cursed as i think but dance with me no i just love it when he said the michael jackson line i was like how can i make this the cursed the cursedest vocal that i've ever done that's how i did it um okay now moving into what this tutorial is actually about which is the drums uh so now moving into what i meant to actually do as this tutorial and not talk about the top half and that is the drum break so um first tip big tip do this one if you don't do anything else in this tutorial you don't always have to edit the hell out of your drums if it works it works that's my whole drum loop so i just use the whole loop for the first section i'm going to play this and we're just going to go over what comes in as it goes a little micro edit here so i just basically took a slice off of this Right, so normally I'd have it uh, going all the way to this point. And instead of repeating that, I just went in and did a little quick micro edit by like sliding this to there. Bam, new section almost like refreshes the drum loop. Um, next, I have this little thing. So before I show that, just repeating the same little element over and over again can work well if you're ever doing um, like pre-drop or like like section switches or whatever. So the next thing that I have here, we'll talk about the processing for these. Um, there's two things that are going on here. The first thing is I'm sending my drum breaks into this. There is a, let me play this real quick. There is a multi-band uh, compressor here. And the way that this works is it's basically an EQ that's boosted. Then every time this signal amount gets passed right here, compressor engages that pushes the band down um, like four and it, it's like roughly five um, decibels or whatever. Um, it's not important to know the decibel amounts. Just know that by having a longer attack, it lets me not squash that uh, low end transient out. And that's important for a second because I'm about to bring in new drums and the new one is going to have a lot of sub in it. So um, the next thing that I have here is this little thing that's being automated, which is a high pass filter. Um, before I do that, though, yeah, I'll go ahead and show that. So this is what's right. It's bringing that little high pass filter up. That just lets you know the next section's coming. Then the other thing that I have here is the boominess EQ. Now, what is the boominess EQ? 
Um, a lot of drum breaks will have like sweet spots in them. That's like the boomy section, I would say, of that. Just gives it more dynamic range if I remove that and then uh, send it through a clipper. So the clipper is slamming this out. And if I leave the boomy section in, gets a lot boomier. Yeah. I mean, hopefully that makes sense. All right. Next thing. Um, I have a sideband um, moving or whatever, whatever it's called, adaptive EQ, which is basically multi-brand compressor. It's just pulling some stereo information off the high end. All right, and then the clipper slamming it all together. So then the next little section here is the cymbal break piece that I have. And the thing to know about this is this was the last piece that I did as far as the drum breaks go. So I just kind of like took what was working right here cymbal wise and um, removed all the quarter hit cymbals that I have covering the rest of the breaks. So the next thing that I did was once the beat drops here, once like everything comes in, um, I wanted, I was kind of like hearing in my ear, like little quick cymbal hits on, on the um, beat sections of the quarter notes. Um, I sent those through a chorus. That's not really that important. And then I just compressed them together. The important part is I sent that bus into my drum bus, which is going into here, going into here, and going into my clipper. So the cool thing about that is now that I've done that, like anytime I want to do like adjustments, so I have like this sweep up right here, it, you know, it sweeps all my bands. I don't have to like go in and do separate EQs for all these. The other thing too is it like processes them together so it adds weight to like every piece of it. Another little micro low pass, uh, high pass edit right there. So then the other thing that I did was the same technique, but with a kick and a snare. So I added this acoustic kick that I have right here. By itself sounds like that. Added it into there and just kind of gain mixed it in to where it fit and work with it. Same thing with this snare, acoustic-y snare that I just pitched up. And then as you can see here, I have a side chain that I also added. So like when the drum break gets to its loudest points, which is like right here and right here, or at least the most over distorted points from the, from the clipper that I put in there, I have a side chain that ducks all of my elements off. So, you know, pulls two different bands off um, of my synth mix bus. So, and by sending all of these into that shared bus there, it kind of like helps everything get glued together. So it makes it sound like I have one drum loop that's going on. I'm not like mixing different drums together. I mean, it's kind of the idea of um, using mix buses in general, but like, especially with like the heavy distortion that I have on it, it makes it all sound like it's one thing. So going to the next part, um, I go through here and just do a little sweep. Once uh, the yellow pieces happen, that's when this happens. <laughs> As you can see, that gives a lot of space. And I did have to remove my side chain from this. Right. To make that work, um, moving to the next part. This is the first drum switch. So I do eight bars of just cymbal every time. Then I switch to like some new cymbals coming in and these just kind of Right, accent um, a little bit more stuff coming in with the. Now, the next piece that's kind of important here is um, I did some time stretching stuff differently than how I normally do it, and that is um, I wanted to repitch my stuff and do like a snare roll. The way that I would normally show people how to like time stretch drums is you like pull your loop in. It's not gonna be in time. Let me copy that value so I have that. Um, basically, you're gonna have a loop. It's gonna not be in tempo with the project. 
you're going to set it in in time by like doing that and this is probably a two bar loop depending on the shortness yep kicks there snares here and here makes sense okay but once you do that you're not able if you use the time knob for this right this knob right here once you do that you're not able to adjust the pitch on the fly using the pitch knob right as you can see i'm changing this nothing's happening that's a pitch um, envelope or pitch automation right there the way to get around that is if instead you use the multiplier knob so like if you have it like this and you just kind of like do this until it's exactly the length that's right i'll paste my value in that's the correct length now when i change my pitch uh, it actually does something so that allowed me to do this little snare roll here going into my halftime drums <laughs> Now the halftime drums are a little bit unorthodox because one of the ways that I would also say to do this is like, I think I'll start with the cymbals actually. So all I did here that's different is got rid of most of my uh, happy cymbals. And just added a hat on every offbeat. Um, so the way that I typically would do like halftime drum stretching or whatever, halftime drum stuff. Um, I didn't want to change the tone of it. So normally I would just have it like this and then I would double the length of it. Right, so I do, I, instead of going to that short distance, I would go to this distance. You kind of get grainier drums doing that, but it works as, as long as it works, it works. Um, I didn't do that this time though, and that's because there's another nice way that you can do this. So if you ever want to halftime your drums, there's a quick trick that you can use. Basically take a slice, do the same length of the slice as space, right? So that's one slice. Let's say this is another slice. That means this one needs that much space. That means this one, uh, like if this was my slice here, well, you know what, we'll do every section of this first piece this and this and this that means these should all get um i need to select all these at once one one and one and if you do that all the way down the line i'll kind of stop it here for time's sake but hopefully you're getting the idea that gives you a halftime drum break just to make sense out of this the reason that, that works is if you were to time stretch your drums like that so um, if you were to do time stretching instead, this is like the standard. Um, if you were to double the length, you end up with that. Right, it makes sense. Everyone is twice as long. Therefore, just add a space the same amount in between it. So that's a quick way to do that. And the only big, big difference between what I just showed there and what I did here is I just used the kick and the snare as my main set points. had a little drum roll there and I didn't slice even um, spacing between like some of these little middle pieces right here. And that keeps me from having exactly a halftime flow there, but it really ends up giving you like this really interesting swingy, jazzy almost. Dare I say cursed? I won't say it's cursed. The top part is the cursed part. With that being shown, y'all, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, thank you for watching. If you're not uh, su subscribed or whatever it's called on Patreon, go do that. You get plenty of stuff for the uh, price that it is right now. So thank you for watching and I will see y'all in the next one.